Okay, here we're here with Jason Russo again. Um, we're going to talk about all cross country training. Hopefully, you watched the uh, his first one on summer training, so you can see how it blends into the next one. So let's start by saying, how do you handle the team going from summer into school? In other words, the all time schedule changes for them. Um, you know, as I've done this longer. And this is this is very true down in Haddonfield, but I think it's it's true just in general for kids. I, I don't know how some of these high school kids do it. Um, the the number of activities that they're involved in, the work that they put in for school. I mean, the the, the workload of school is incredible. Um, and we spend a lot of time as we get towards those later weeks of August, just sitting down and talking about, OK, there's going to be a major transition coming here. Uh, you're used to getting up at a certain time. You're used to eating at certain times. You're used to being able to drink whenever you want, uh, you know, water, um, hydrate, you know, but, but now with school starting, you know, those, those habits that you formed over the, those routines that you formed over the course of the summer, you know, we're going to transition and, um, you know, getting a feel for which teachers uh, will allow you to snack in their classroom, which teachers will allow you to, to drink waters in their class, which are really most, but every once in a while you'll find one that you'll go, Oh, I don't know if I can do that in there or not. Um, so we talk about those things. We talk about, you know, getting into those habits of getting to sleep earlier. Um, you know, the importance of finding the time to get the work done time management. Um, and I really think when we get to that last that the first week of September, it's kind of touch and go for a little bit where we're checking in regularly with the kids. How are you doing? How's, how's the beginning of the school year? Um, you know, maybe we give them a Saturday off early on in the season uh, just because of that adjustment to school. So we put a lot of emphasis on that transition to summer to school. And did you prepare for that adjustment and how are you adjusting and, um, you know, it's just, there's just so much going on. So we talk a lot about it. And I think that our athletes do a pretty good job of communicating with us, you know, how things are going and, and when they're tired and when they're tired, you know, we obviously have to adjust and say, you know, it, today's not a good day to go get in a good workout. You know, we'll move that to a different day. Um, so I think that's, that's how we, we deal with that, um, transition. Um, you talked about how you start tempos and VO2 max or what we call 3,200 pace, you know, workouts. Um, when you start competing, does the training change? You know, what, what does change about it? Um, it, so when we start competing, it, it kind of, it varies a little bit. So we have our dual meets and, um, you know, I, we have our early season meets and in some of our early season meets, we'll look at those meets as opportunities to, to get in like a, a tempo type run, um, not necessarily racing. And that's not for all of our athletes. Some of our athletes, every opportunity to race is an opportunity to race, but for some of our athletes, they're going out there and, and they're controlling their pace. They're controlling their effort. Maybe they're bringing along some of the younger athletes to kind of help them, you know, uh, achieve new personal bests. Um, so early on in the season, we're using some of our races as just a tempo workout in place of, you know, so obviously if we're, if we're getting a tempo in on a race day, we've hit that. We're not going to hit that again later in the week. Um, so that's a change as, as we start getting towards, you know, the, the major races of the season, um, there's probably, uh, you know, beginning of October, there's probably, less big workouts that we're doing in the week. You know, maybe we're doing two instead of three uh, or, or two big ones and, and one minor one. And the race is, is taking the place of one of those big ones. So we, we would have our race, we would have one other big workout during the week and then maybe something minor during the week too, or, or maybe something that's just really different pace going to speed or something along those lines, but uh, still, still a, a yellow level workout where we're not, we're not overly stressing the athletes. Okay. So you answered the question. You do have some dual meets, or at least some people are calling it batch meets, where there might be a couple teams. Um, how do you pick the other meets? So I think um, for me, I start by thinking about what's, what's the end goal for this team. And um, although the athletes typically um, 
the athletes typically drive the ship. Uh, I know before the season starts, just in talking to the rising seniors, where their head is at. Um, and obviously I, I have the, the, I can change my mind later on, but you know, if I know that athletes are looking at, Hey, we want to be competitive at meet a champions. We want to be competitive at regionals. Then I'm going to look and say, okay, uh, we want to be competitive at, at regionals. I want to make sure that we go to Bowdoin, uh, to, to race at some point. We want to be competitive at, at meet a champions. That's a big race we're talking about. I want to make sure that we're going to, uh, to Homedale for some races. Uh, and I, I kind of target a couple of those races uh, early on, like the end goal, what matches up with that end goal. I get those on the calendar. And then I kind of look, I'm, I'm looking at, you know, are there any big spaces of time where there's not a race? Do I need something in there to kind of uh, to help our athletes uh, stay, uh, stay sharp? Um, and maybe I add one more in there. But I think what what I like to do is try to and and the process in New Jersey with state sectionals, meet a champions. There's three right there. So I think we we like to look for like six to seven big meets that we're looking at over the course of a season, and then hopefully a lot of our races are are not big races. And and I think that we as coaches have to make sure that that it might be a a big race to the athletes and that they look and say, well, that's an all-star meet, but we're not emphasizing it as a big race and we're not getting them all excited for it. And we're not, you know, really putting the pedal to metal. We're just kind of, you know, trying to, to keep them mentally relaxed and calm and, you know, uh, and, and not treating it as, as that it's a big race. So I think that, I think I answered your question in there. Yeah. No, after you did so do you have a, a go-to workout in the fall that you like to do, whether it's a, it's one that measures where you are at that moment or one that you might do in September and October and November, you know, that allows the people to see how they've improved or not? So honestly, my go-to workout is is the VO2 max, uh, the, the 3,200 meter pace interval work. Um, and, and I like to start with, uh, eight hundreds, uh, moving up, eventually getting to miles, uh, with my top athletes over the course of the season. Um, and I like that because I, it, it just, it's so meaningful to the athletes. They, they know because of the number of seasons that they've done it because of the amount of time they've done it, they know, you know, if I can go out there and run, you know, uh, three times 540 uh, in a mile, well, then I, I'm pretty confident that I'm an 1120 kid in a two mile. And if I'm an 1120 kid in a two mile on a flat track, I feel pretty good about being able to do this on a cross country course. Um, and I think having that, that confidence for them is huge. So I really like the VO2 work, although I will say Coach Baker is uh, is wearing on me, and we've tried a couple of critical velocity workouts where we're slowing them down a little bit, getting giving them less rest, and and we're finding that they're fresher coming off of it. When you're doing those VO2 workouts, especially something like the miles, you know, it, it's it's almost like they they run a it is like they've run a really hard race, and and they've they need that time afterwards to recover. Whereas what we found is doing some of that critical velocity stuff, you know, they're coming off of it still, you know, with that, with that excitement and confidence, but they're not quite as, as uh, for lack of a better expression, they're not quite as banged up as they were with the VO two max and uh, the recovery period isn't quite as long. So I, I'm, let's say I'm transitioning, but I, I still, I'm still holding a little bit to the VO two max stuff. Yeah, I've transitioned probably every five years and I've been coaching 40 six years if you find something new you try it if you like it you keep it it's yeah. constantly more things in your bag that you're trying to fit in during the season sure so um does anything change when you're peaking Do you back off intensity mileage or cut out a long run or shorten it whatever i i think when when we're at the end of our season when we're peaking when the the races mean the most what i really try to emphasize with our athletes is the work is done you know, at this point in the season, we can only overdo it. We can't underdo it. So 
if if I'm saying let's go for a five mile run, you're saying, Coach Russo, can I go for a three mile run? Sure, go for a three mile run. You know, if we're doing a workout, we're doing a workout just to kind of to keep them in the uh, in the frame of mind of oh yeah, Tuesdays or Wednesdays we always have that middle of the week workout. So I'm I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna feel that's what I've been comfortable with. That's what my body has done. So we're gonna do that. But it's really you know, those workouts are built for them to be successful and maybe touching a little bit of everything, all, all of the different systems. Um, so I, I think our big thing is when we get to that point where we're looking for our athletes to peak, I emphasize we can only do too much right now. Uh, you know, if there's a question about what you feel like you can handle today, well, then let's do less. And, and you know, and, and I, I don't think that, we are actively trying to do a tremendous cutback of mileage, but I just think that we're touching base with our athletes, listening to what they're saying and just very quick to make that adjustment of, okay, that's going to be okay right now. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for all the information and your time. Thank you. uh, And good luck this season. All right. Thanks so much.